You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust, I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Just because I walk as if I have oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like suns and like moons, with the certainty of tides, just like hope springing high, still I rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries? Does my sassiness upset you? <laughs> Don't take it so hard just because I laugh. <laughs> As if I have gold mines digging in my own backyard. You can shoot me with your words. You can cut me with your lies. You can kill me with your hatefulness. But just like life, I rise. Well, diversity means a lot of things. It's not just race, it's like different ethnicities, backgrounds, classes. With diversity, not only do we get like a breadth of experiences, but we understand ourselves better. Because when you understand other people better, you understand yourself better, you understand why you believe the way you do, you understand how things work together, and you understand like what it means to be human. When you have diversity in thought, in race, in background, in ethnicity, you understand you know, why we're here and like what makes us different, what makes us special, what makes us who we are. Different people from different backgrounds can all teach you something. It's very important. I feel like everyone should have a little bit of diversity in their lives. It's needed to help society, it's needed for jobs, it's needed for education. Diversity is when differences come together and they create something even more beautiful than they could ever be on their own. I know a lot of people don't really find Black History Month that significant, so I hope that they learn from this and know that it's, it really is important to a lot of people and it impacts a lot of people to know that their culture is being heard. <laughs> okay, so in elementary school when I was growing up, I was super insecure about the way I looked, specifically my hair, my skin color, and just the way my body was set up, you know, being tall, and obviously standing out was just a tall black girl, really. Um, and so I would uh, try to change myself in the way that society viewed people pretty or beautiful, and that necessarily wasn't black girls, tall black girls, that is. <clears throat> so I would ask my mom to straighten my hair, and I'd like dress like the other white girls at my school, and I loved being in the winter because my skin got paler. And I'd always fear about the summer because I know that my skin got darker, I'd get braids, and I just didn't think I'd look at my best when I was truly myself. And as I grew up, and this is when I became involved with social media, it really helped me because I, I was able to see other people loving themselves. And I saw other black girls or, you know, Indian girls, Arabian girls, just different people, women of color loving themselves with the societal flaws that people, other people said were not pretty or not beautiful or not acceptable in society. So I just looked at that and I looked at myself and I, I came to terms with the fact that I can't help who I am. Like this is the way I was born, this is the way God made me. So I took those imperfections and I turned them kind of into my own points of beauty that I could look at and feel comfortable with. And now that I'm growing up, I'm still, you know, on this journey for myself, but I feel like I've really come to terms that I do love myself. I'm just working on myself and it's okay to be struggling to love yourself, but as long as you're comfortable with who you are, I feel like that's really what's beautiful. And that's how you earn self-love. So for any black girl who's struggling with that, I would say just to admire your skin and admire the culture it has and the background that it has that's come attached with and to admire your mom, your dad, your cousin, your brother, your sister, and that we really are just a family, and it's not, you shouldn't base your self-worth on others, on what others think, it should really just be about you. Because race isn't just an indicator, you can learn things from other different races, so like, 
you should never close yourself off to other things just because someone else isn't exactly who you are or where you come from. I feel like we, at the end of the day, there's just one right race, and that's the human race. So we all need to embrace that and just learn from each other. I think of Black History Month, I think of just all the uh, civil rights leaders I can think of. I mean, obviously Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Rosa Parks, just all the, all the main ones. And then I think of freedom. I think of what they, what all of they did to help me have my freedom, my family. It's important to remember who came before us so that we can learn from them, so that we can grow from them, and so that we don't forget. Because if we forget, then we lose all the progress and we lose, like, we lose everything if we forget. Like, you have to remember. And also, like, Black History Month is an opportunity for us to recognize a culture that does not align with the common culture. And so, when it's recognized, I feel like understanding comes with that. And I feel like we grow closer together when we can understand each other. Because a lot of problems with race relations, in my opinion, just comes from lack of understanding. So Black History Month brings understanding that otherwise wouldn't have been there and that we're otherwise not taught, but that like promotes an environment that fosters understanding.